because she was living actually with him. And then she was living on the back street there with um, one of the other associates of Malik. You've been in the police service for how long? 40 years. 40 years. And it's really 39 years and 10 months, so I could call it 40 years. And you had a good run. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it, it was a good run. What, what, what stands out in your mind as a, as a Caribbean citizen coming from Barbados, settling in Trinidad, working for the police service here? What stands out in your mind? Well, uh, my gratitude to Trinidad and Tobago for having adopted me and I grew from a boy in the 18 years old when I joined the police service to when I left the police service at the age of 57. So it made, Trinidad made me a man. I grew up as a man in Trinidad. And you rose to what rank? Assistant Commissioner. Assistant Commissioner. You would have served under who? Uh, I started off when I joined the police service in 19, November 46. I missed uh, Angus Muller, who was the Commissioner of Police. And after Angus M Muller was Eric Beden. After Eric Beden was our first local commissioner of police. George Thomas Whitmore Carr, Mr. Carr, he was the first local commissioner of police. Then he was succeeded by Mr. J.P. Reed, James Potter Reed. He, was, he succeeded Mr. Carr. And then our first black Commissioner of Police, Eustace Bernard. He was 12 feet tall, 12 feet tall. Very good Commissioner of Police, the best, the best. As a matter of fact, I am between the two. Joseph Skerritt on the left, over there, and Gail and Benson, to the back of my house. But with, when we got information about Gail Ann Benson, we all came up in convoy from the CID in Port of Spain. And I was present when that body was found. Um, I was present when that body was seen in the grave. I was present when it was taken out. I recall the smell before it was taken out. We had to send and get a gallon of pitch oil to spread around the grave to keep us from having to endure that terrible smell. Eventually she was taken out from the grave. I did not escort her to the Port of Spain General Hospital, but I was detailed to witness the post-mortem examination at the Port of Spain mortuary. When Dr. Simpson, I think is his name, the British pathologist, he came, I witnessed that post-mortem examination. Well, it was, as the doctor said, it was like a, a medical, a, a, it was like a classroom. Everything he did, he explained what he was doing and why he was doing it. When they fell into the grave, they fell in the grave. And she fought with him and fought with him until he eventually stabbed her. He said it's most likely that she would have been alive when she was, when they started to cover the grave. And to prove that, he said he was going to check from the throat coming down because if she was alive she would be breathing particles of dirt and it would be in the, the track. And indeed yes, when he opened the throat there were particles of dirt in the windpipe. 
So that proved from what the doctor said that she was alive when, she, when they began to cover her. I've never seen that before. I see bodies going down in the grave. But this is one now that is coming out of the grave. And it had a great effect on me. Not the first time that I was investigating murders, but this type of murder. The type of murder. Yes. It was the first time to see a body being exhumed. But I would have seen bodies in different, at different stages of decomposition. I would have seen, seen body, several bodies found in the forest. Found in a house, I remember one at Beach, where we knew that they have, um, somewhat, something was wrong with that house because the amount of kobo that were flying around and knocking at the door was it? When we went inside, there was this man who had died probably days before in an advanced state of decomposition, worms, worms, worms all over. So I would have had, that, had that, those type of experience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.